Resident doctors are not given enough time to sleep or recover, and as a result, they suffer. 80 hour work weeks, how did we even get here? Today, it is still legal and accepted for resident doctors to work up to 28 hours in a shift. If I can ask one thing of you, it would be this. Take a moment to look a resident doctor in the eyes, acknowledge their sacrifice, and thank them. Hello everyone, what is up and welcome back to another vlog. This is gonna be an exciting vlog. It's 24 hour shift. I'm on labor and delivery for the next 24 hours. Well, less than that because it's already 12.45 in the afternoon. My shift started at 6 a.m. today and I will be getting off around probably seven tomorrow. If you're new here, my name is Rachel. I am a first year OBGYN resident physician and in the United States. So if you're unfamiliar with our residency training, it is very brutal. It's a really broken system. This is our resident sleep room. So hopefully we can spend some time in here over the next 24 hours. However, these sheets are pretty dirty. They look clean because I just made the bed, but I found new sheets. Put some new ones on for my own peace of mind because I have issues with cleanliness and all of that. like such a mess but we just finished a c-section um the baby's tracing did not look good and so we just made the executive decision with the patient's permission to continue with the c-section um it went really well it was super quick and easy and i got to close which was really fun um and then my mom actually just dropped off sushi for us me and my senior and then the attending just so we can have dinner because we missed the dinner in the cafeteria and my mom is visiting um, so yeah, I'm actually very tired, but we have a long time to go. Hi! Food! Yay! Yay. Let's eat! Yeah. Our sushi, Cindy. Okay, wait, I, I want to, I want to, I'm going to have some. Are you serious? Oh my god. I'm going to go break some of the water. I successfully broke her water. All right, you guys. It is almost 10 o'clock. We have like one patient that's laboring and then I just admitted someone to be induced. I wanted to just change and change my socks and underwear and wash my face really quick. Because being here all day, it's just like, you just feel nasty because you're running around all day and I would like to feel at least somewhat refreshed as we go into the night. So I'm doing a little bit of skincare really quick. I've been using these drops because my skin gets really dry in the hospital. And then I have this eye cream to hopefully erase my terrible dark circles that I have developed. It's not cute. The clean underwear that I'm gonna change into in a little bit. I just don't want this patient to deliver. Put on some deodorant. And then I need to brush my teeth, but I have a feeling this patient's gonna go quick. I had placed a cervical ripening balloon in her, um, and then I checked her and she was pretty dilated, and then amniotic sac was really tense during the contraction, so I, was, I just ruptured it, and then um, with permission from my attending and everyone, um, I ruptured it, and then, um, yeah, so after you rupture membranes, they typically dilate pretty quick and then have their baby, so I'm gonna go. water because I need to hydrate. Um, what is that? Um, I'm hoping we can get some shut eye. This patient's going to deliver. She's now eight centimeters dilated. So um, I imagine that she will deliver very soon. Maybe we can lay down like just a little bit and then deliver her and then hopefully lay down again. I'm very tired. I would like to lay down. I'm like sitting here hunched over. That's why my back hurts. I think I have a rib out. This hurts all the way around. Oh, the 
that I'm all sitting here like this, like what do I expect, you know? So I'm just finishing up updating our list that we have and kind of just like looking over everyone's vitals, looking at the cervical exams, if the nurses have done any additional ones or our postpartum patients looking at their vitals, making sure that they're okay. Um, and then, yeah, that's about it. That's all I'm doing right now. Hearing this phone ring makes my heart drop, so. But these things are with me at all times. At all times. I've also been wearing a mask recently because a lot of patients are coming in with COVID or the flu. And I don't want those because if I get those, I will still have to come to work unless I'm like dying. So I'd rather not. So I wear this when I go out there. And yeah. I mentioned earlier how I ruptured someone's um, amniotic sac. So essentially it looks like a long crochet hook and you go inside and you make sure that the, the fetal head is well applied to the cervix because you don't want the cord to fall through when you rupture the membrane. So you feel around and make sure the head is well applied. During the contraction, the uterus tenses up, right? It contracts and then the amniotic sac will get tense too and you can feel like the tenseness of it. So you feed the crochet hook in and then you turn it up with the point up, you like rupture the bag like that. I don't know, it's hard to explain, very simple to do. After you rupture the bag, you just kind of wait and you wait for the fluid to come out and then you know whether it's like clear, meconium, you know, blood tinged. I recheck to make sure that just the head is on the cervix and there's nothing else there. Um, yeah, so that's what I did, and uh, I'm tired, you guys. Okay, so my senior's letting me lay down. It's 1021. That, that patient's gonna deliver any second, probably. So I'll get a call, and then I'll run to the delivery and do that, but I'm gonna lay down while I can, and there's the monitor, the fetal um, heart rate tracings are on this big screen that we have in here, so we know what's going on. I'm gonna lay in this clean bed that I made today. It's 10.35, and I know this patient's gonna deliver any second now. Okay, I gotta go. She just got to 10 centimeters, and so she'll deliver very soon. Okay, yeah. So I only lay down for 10 minutes. I close my eyes for like five minutes, but then I know that she's gonna deliver <laughs> very shortly, and so it's hard to fall asleep when you're trying when you're anticipating getting called and then running to a delivery so over the last 10 minutes she went from eight centimeters to nine and a half and now she's 10 so um she's gonna deliver quick so i'm gonna head over and deliver very very nice delivery so i went in there when she was complete and the nurse was like hey i was just gonna call you and do a practice push and then I felt baby and baby's head was so low, um, so I was like, we, if we do a practice push, we will be having a baby right now, so let's call the attending and my senior, and they came, and then the baby just slid out, basically, and I just helped put baby on mom, and it just went really well. I am happy. <laughs> that was my only delivery of today. Which is shocking, because the other day I delivered like five babies in a 12-hour shift. Now I get to put in my postpartum orders, do the delivery note, and then I think I can lay down. And actually close my eyes and sleep, because now I feel better that she's delivered. Now I can rest peacefully without worrying about that delivery. Of course I have my phone. I have my own pillowcase that I brought. I have like chest pain. I'm pretty sure it's from that rib. But let's get some shut eye. My senior is gonna come in shortly. She's just finishing up a note. She went to the NICU to look at the babies. But I'm like, no, I'm too tired. It's 2.30. We have a triage patient. Back to bed. 
It's 6.05 in the morning. I rounded on two postpartum patients and I also had to rupture someone's water and put in an IUPC and an FSE on baby's head. I'll put pictures of those here, essentially. I broke the water, I put in an intrauterine pressure catheter to um, monitor the strength of mom's contractions and that also can be used um, to provide fluid back to baby after um, rupturing so you use fluid it's kind of counterintuitive but you break the water and then if you need to give water back to baby like around baby for the heart rate you can do that with that IUPC and then I put an FSC on baby's head which is a fetal scalp electrode to monitor the baby's heart rate better because we were getting a not happy baby so it was kind of an urgent moment and I had to do everything pretty quickly and I did it very calmly and everything worked out well. So yeah, then I rounded on two patients, finished their notes, and now we're gonna do sign out to the day team um, because it's Saturday and they just got here and then we get to go home. We put her on the bed wall, all that, mm -hmm. but she never triggered. I look so good. Wow. Just beautiful. The crisp morning air. Uh, I have not really been outside since yesterday morning at this exact time. I have been having really severe chest pain. I think it's my rib. I think that, that my rib, like, I don't know, I have like some sort of rib spasm since yesterday C-section. I don't know what happened. I don't know if I'm going to sleep tonight because I slept from, let's see, so I went to bed around 1130 got woken up at 1 15 1 30 so that's like two hours then i went back to bed at like 3 30 and then woke up at 4 45 so it's like not bad it's not a bad amount of sleep to be completely honest my last 24 hour shift i only slept one hour so this feels significantly different I do want to say that at residency, there are days that I have accepted how things are, I've accepted the schedule, I've accepted the poor pay, but then there are many days where I absolutely like refuse to accept the amount of hours that we are overworked and the how like how little we're paid um and this is not to target my program my program is incredible and they are very on top of us about not going over our hours they're very on top of our mental health they are um they do pay us not a lot but it is more than i've seen for other OBGYN residencies but i realize that i'm not going to be one of those doctors that revolutionizes this field and makes some miraculous discovery like that's just not that's not me that's not that's not my purpose i don't think that i'm capable of doing that. I don't think that I'm one of those people. I think that m my job and role in being in medicine and this field is to help change things like our, the amount that we're overworked and how little we're paid and to be vocal about that because it's just because it's been accepted for so many years doesn't mean that we still need to accept this. Ultimately, this whole residency thing was designed by someone who, a physician, a surgeon, who had a severe cocaine addiction. And so he was able to stay up for so many hours at a time because he was on cocaine. And he would have his residents do the same. And if you think about the term residence, residency, we're called residents because we essentially live at the hospital. Um, I don't like how our training is. Um, but for now I have to accept it because that's, you know, that's where I'm at and I don't have a choice. I love this field so much and if I didn't love it then things would be a lot different but um, I'm still here and kicking. Bringing babies into this world is my number one joy. We're gonna just roll with it. I'm gonna go home. I love you guys so much. Please thumbs up this video, subscribe. If you're not subscribed, comment something. It really helps out the algorithm. I've been working really, really, really hard to try and continue making content for you guys and um, to still be working 80 hours a week at the same time um, and I'm a one-person team so I'm doing it all on my own and so it's a lot of work and it really helps me to know that um, people are still watching and it helps me it helps YouTube know that people still watch so I love you guys until next time take care of yourselves be kind to yourselves continue to work hard and all that good stuff okay bye